Hi everyone, it's Crafty Kathy here with Challenge Accepted. And again this week, as we are doing all month, we're playing along with May I Scrap Lift You. And today's uh, original, that, or, or today's artist that we're scrap lifting is Rachel Lowe. And she does amazing work. I mean, just absolutely amazing work. Um, the, I chose one of the design team pages that she did for Click Kits, uh, Click International, and it's all Vicki Booten um, fernwood. So I pulled out my fernwood, and I'm going to go with a few similar or the same kinds of things, but I'm going to do it a little bit differently. Um, I chose this background paper instead of this other grid. I don't know if I have any of this grid paper left. It's also kind of, sort of a grid. It's ledger paper, and it has this uh, down here. It has the floral cluster kind of already built in, and it has some of the mixed media uh, already done. These cute little red lines up here, but it has things. And I, I fussy cut, it took me hours to do this because I'm having pain in both hands now. And um, I, I didn't do it perfectly, but I think the way that I'm gonna put the page together, it's probably not going to matter. At, at least that's my, my hope and intention. And so I'm going to go ahead and get started and hope it doesn't take too long because I'm leaving my hand, my thumb brace off for the length of this video. Uh, the photo I'm using is one of Katie just yesterday while I was filming my video for today. Um, she w had set up a little uh, salon. I, I moved out. A, a chair that I had that was low enough that she could, uh, the guy whose hair she was cutting could sit in it and she could reach everything. She set up a mirror. It was raining. She was going to do it on the upstairs deck, but it was raining. So my deck has a, a roof that that is semi-dry. You can see from the reflection right here that there's some water coming in from the gutters. They're a little too small there. And then we moved over this kind of barbecue table for her to set up all of her supplies. And she has a towel there. She had everything all set up and bless her heart, she swept it all up and cleaned it all up afterwards. But she, uh, this was kind of like a little pop-up hair salon and she's beginning to get friends and friends of friends coming over. And so this may be a, a, a regular thing, but it was her first since she cut my hair when it was first here at the house. So I just absolutely love this. I asked her, I said, let me get a photo. And she did this cute little pose. I love it. I mean, I can't even tell you how much I love it. But the colors, the, the greens are still very, very green. And her shirt was very, very red. And I needed to filter the photo to get it more in the tones of the collection. Uh, so I filtered this photo to match my supplies. <laughs> and I, I don't often do that. I, I usually filter photos because they're not clear enough or sharp enough. And I wanna emphasize something sometimes for color. But I, uh, I did this one. I have done this. Um, You'll notice that Rachel has this uh, little three by four um, cut apart card kind of over in her in the middle of her cluster. I'm gonna actually have mine kind of right there. So we'll see. I needed a background because I cut too deeply here and, and I was doing it kind of wonky. So I'm gonna have to make up some um, some stuff as I go along, I think. I can do this up to here. 
let's see how far I need to do that. I'd like to have it up to this red line, I think. So, and boy, do I know me and my love of fussy cutting, and I hate to cover up those butterflies, but with my hands the way they are, um, it's probably just as well. I don't do a lot of, a lot of fussy cutting. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna line it up with that red line. And then I've got another one down here, this bit that I'm gonna line up here and I'm gonna cover that seam with the photo and the cards. This is just a scrap and it's the right width and length for what I'm trying to accomplish. It doesn't match up print-wise and it's not even cut straight. So to get it parallel with this line, there's gonna be this gap, but I think the card's gonna cover that up. It does. I wanna place it so that these leaves are still over top, but you can read the words. And I've got this, so I need to push it a little bit more in. And I think you can tell that that says wonderful, even if you can't see the W. And then I'm gonna put this right here. Do that. And then this, I may put a little foam behind it. Um, that's weird, it's a weird shape there, but I'm gonna go with it. <laughs> I'm gonna put it just inside, I'll overlap the card and put it just inside this yellow frame. Okay, now I have fussy cut some tickets and I'm going to insert those. I'm gonna put a little bit of foam up at the top of them. I'm gonna do them like this, I think. Yeah. Put some the foam up at the top as I put them in. I'll put the red first and it's going to go down in here and then I've got the orange We'll go on top of that, but down a little farther. I'm gonna leave that little flower there. I did, I, I went to great lengths not to lose that little flower. So uh, once I get everything inserted that I want to insert, I will uh, go back to the back and, and kind of tape it up uh, with washi tape. Okay, so I want a butterfly here looking like it's coming out from behind the fern and over that leaf so i'm gonna do that and um and then i'll cut the the uh wing even with the edge of the paper when I'm cleaning up afterwards. Okay, so it'll be just a little bit of the wing that'll get lost there. And then I have this butterfly that could go right there. I think that's good. That's not where I originally pictured it. 
but I think it's gonna work there. It has that straight edge, um, and I guess technically that's not a butterfly, that's a moth. So I'll put that there. And then I've got this one, which I thought I might put kind of right down over. I wanted something overlapping the um, florals here, but not covering too much of the design. And I love how that the design and the colors of the moth actually kind of blend in with the um, with the uh, florals. I cut a tiny butterfly from a um, from one of the branding strips because I knew I had a kind of a hole right in here and I wanted to put something to cover that hole without um, being too big. So this is tiny and I'm gonna kinda put it right there. Okay, and that still allows these leaves to kind of lift up. And that lifts up and this lifts up. I'm gonna put some foam under the daisy and under the, um, the little uh, bud there um, so that they stand out. And I don't want them flopping around and possibly tearing. They're very close. This daisy is very close to tearing now. And I'm gonna reinforce the um, stem with some glossy accents. And I don't have my glossy accents on the table, so I will do that off camera. I wanna get this lined up straight. There we go. Okay, so right there, there's a, a, a weak point there and there where the scissors slipped. And if I do some glossy accents, I'll do some glossy accents on a lot of the green parts, you know, maybe right in some of the um, lines of the leaves. And if I, if I have it handy um, near the table, I'll use it on camera, but if not, I'll have to do that off camera that just occurred to me that I needed to do that. So I apologize for not having that ready. That's probably something, glossy accents, probably something I should have uh, handy and, and put on here. And I'm surprised I didn't think of that because I used to use glossy accents a lot. In fact, it was the only liquid glue I used, but it dries glossy as you, <laughs> as the name might imply. And in a lot of cases, I prefer if the glue dries matte. Okay, so here, okay. Did I take I took the paper off that so that should be sticking down. If it doesn't, I'll help it with some liquid glue. I could I'm I'm fine with with that. And I fussy cut this bird and thought I might have him kind of right over here. And then I'll start going through the stickers and, and other stuff. But first, I kind of want to 
figure out my title, I'm gonna put a couple dots of liquid glue here. and here on my fussy cut um, oh, bird feet there. Okay. And I'm not going to do the mixed media that Rachel did in hers. Um, not because I don't like it, but because there's already this and this on here, and I kind of like that, and I don't want to mess with um, success there. I have this. I have these two titles that I've considered. This one that says "Incredible," because Katie is incredible. And this one that says beautiful. And there's pink, there's a pink flower, and I, I have some more pink flowers in the stickers that I can add in. But I think this pink is closer to that, the pink of that flower. I wish it were in this font, but I kind of like this. And I can fit it entirely on the blue. Let me do that, and then I'll embellish with the other florals I have. And I'm going to, my original title for this was going to be Katie's Pop-Up Salon. And I'm just going to handwrite that in up here as part of my journaling and I'll put a date. So here is, I want to get a camera in there somewhere. And there is an ephemera, piece of ephemera that could go in there, but I think it's too big. And I think I prefer the one that's in the sticker sheet. Here we go. And could maybe let me get the bird up a bit. I can't tear him completely up. And before it sticks down. I want to get a tiny piece of foam under it to create a little dimension. There we go. Okay. And then I have this pink floral that I can probably work in right there and I have another one that glue dries really fast. I've got that that can go there and I think that's that's cool. Now as a nod to Rachel's um, mushrooms, I'm going to put at least one, maybe right there, because for a couple reasons, I'm repeating the red that's here and in her shirt. And I like that idea. I may do two. Let me um, see what I can do. I'm almost done. Um, on Rachel's, she has a frame. She has this center piece of paper that's the butterfly print, and she's got the P 
pink polka dot um, bit behind that. And I like that, but I thought maybe I could use some long labels or something to give sort of a frame around this without having another strip of paper. So I'm gonna do that, maybe, Let's see, if I put this down flat, and then I do this one kind of overlapping with some foam, I think that gives me a cute look there. And then I thought, Let's see, there's this little thing that says happy little moments, which I could overlap kind of over to the side here where this other cluster is located. Let me make sure I get that down parallel to the lines. I love lined paper, but it's there's a little more um, pressure to line things up. And let me see if I can use this. I like that. And I'll put some foam under it to get some lift. and let it slightly overlap that. So I've kind of got this little cluster going on here. Um, let's see if there's anything else I want to add. I like, I like the looking glass and Maybe I could work that in here, 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 here. There's nothing terribly important in the photo right there. So this could maybe be the start of another small cluster. And let me see what I'd like to go with that cluster. This cluster of white flowers seems to it be a, a corner. And this could go in above that. It's almost too big. I'm gonna use the blue ones. The same effect. And the, the colors of that really go nicely. Okay, let me cut the foam, put it back there, and I've got foam all over the place here. Let me cut a piece big enough for the looking glass, the magnifying glass. It's not a looking glass, it's a magnifying glass. I'm to Alice in Wonderland here. Okay, let's do that. And then I will work this in under that. I'm coming down a little. And I like that because it ends up right there near her mirror. And should I do another little mushroom right there? I'll have the little mushroom kind of peeking out. Okay, I've gone way astray here, which 
I'm sure surprises no one. Let me look through and see if there's anything else. I kind of like this maybe for this guy. And I won't put any foam under it because I think it'll stay up. It'll be supported by the card itself. When it gets in a photo album, it's gonna smush down anyway. And I'm gonna use the word today on here somewhere. Not sure where this should go. How about right here? Because I started, I printed the photo and selected the supplies and started fussy cutting yesterday on the day that uh, she did this. So, uh, I got too much glue out of there. How did that happen? That's unusual. Um, let me get a wipe here. So it almost was today. And this will go in the, my 2022 uh, album, my annual album of everyday events and surprises and happiness and all those things. I, some of you know that I've, I've done, I think a video on this or, um, written a blog post or two about my, um, organizing, uh, scheme for my albums. I have about 130 albums filled with 12 by 12 layouts. Um, actually, some of those are Project Life. Um, I did Project Life um, mostly in uh, like 2012 through 20, uh, well, maybe 2011 through 2016 or 2015. And I went back and I had done, I had scrapped nothing from 2008 to 2011. So I went back and did one book of those years, 2008 to 2011. And then I started interspersing 12 by 12 layouts and then I went to 12 by 12 layouts exclusively after 2015. But um, anyway, my scheme is for like, I do a lot of scrapping of photos from prior years, lots of old photos of the kids when they were babies, because I don't get so many photos now that they're older and a, a lot of their lives uh, occur outside these four walls. So um, I go back and, and re-scrap things, especially things that were only scrapped in Project Life format. If I haven't done a full 12 by 12, so I cut that little butterfly wing off. And I want to take a couple of these little gold hearts out of this sticker sheet. Let's see, here's, there's another one in here. And I wanna put it, put the hearts here overlapping. There's my little, my little trademark. Um, I really like this circle-y thing that says the best but I don't see a good place to put it, although maybe right here. Uh, 
under the fern. Um, I think I think I'm gonna look for a flare to go maybe kind of right under there. Let's see if I can find something that's in that. That's a good a good color right there. And if I had another flare, maybe right there. How about that one? That doesn't cover up too much. So those, and that might be good. I could put another one here under the bird, but I have the bird kind of tilted down towards the paper there. So I don't want to change that. And I think I will pull some boho chic sequins. Let me get the adhesive behind the flares. I really love this Fernwood collection. I, I like the new one, um, Sweet Rush, and I, you know, of course, loved color study and didn't think I would ever like any collection as well as color study, but I think I'm really mad about Fernwood, and I, I just bought, um, I found a, um, Pad, a uh, 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 12 by 12 paper pad from Wildflower and Honey, and those colors go really well with Fernwood. So I thought it could extend my Fernwood supplies if I got that. So I'm going to add some sequins kind of. around in here just um, not uh, any particular idea about the colors to use or anything like that. There's a, this metallic kind of copper bronze sort of look that goes well, but I'm also mixing in these kind of uh, holographic looking white and pinkish colors because they add a little bit of kind of um, non-color related um, sparkle. And I like that the, the colored ones draw your eye to the grouping and then the the other ones just seem to sparkle on their own. So I did that, and I'm going to do a few down here by the title. And they should look nice. 
near this flower and I might put two over here by this flower. And we'll get that in there. And we'll just see this, these I want to be subtle. In other words, not have one of these. And I'm gonna kind of spread these around. These look so beautiful on that blue color. And now I'll add in the kind of slightly pink one. And a big white one right there. I've got another of the really pretty pink. And there's a group of three there now. There's one of these little clear bronze colored ones and a pink one down here and I think that's all the dots I have so the layout must be finished I need to put one shiny thing up there right here by these hearts they just they look lonely there and I don't know if I should do it above or below I'm going to do it above and I'm going to use one of these guys and I'll let it overlap the frame of that label. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead I have a collection of ladybugs and I need a ladybug on a Katie bug page so I'm gonna pull those out um, let me see if I can get it out there we go <laughs> it would be best just to take the little out, I think. Okay, and where should this, this should go right here with the, um, the toadstools. Okay, perfect, 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 perfect. Okay, um, there was something else. I don't know why that, I guess leaving it upside down is producing exactly the effect I want, but it's kind of hard to deal with. There was some, oh, I was gonna write my journaling because if I don't write it now, I may forget. I'm gonna write, um, Katie Bugs Salon on the deck, and yesterday was the twenty third, so five, twenty three, twenty two. All right. It is done. Thank you for watching. I, uh, I'll, off camera, I'll go back and, and I'll washi tape up this ugly backside here <laughs> and, uh, and make sure that that's all, um, 
held together and it doesn't uh, get torn when I put it in a page protector. So thank you for watching Challenge Accepted and uh, be sure to check out Shannon's channel. I'll have her link. She's she's known as She's Crafty on, um, uh, on YouTube and She's Crafty 20 on Instagram and she, her, Shannon Allor on Facebook. She's amazing, and I have no idea how she produces page after gorgeous page, day in and day out. She's my idol and a good friend. So thanks for watching. Bye.